still getting a signal from my focus. This must be the ruins of Las Vegas. Poseidon shouldn't be far. Gaia said this is where I'd find Poseidon, but the ruins out here are exposed to the elements. A lot of them are buried in the sand. So maybe Poseidon is underground. If that's true, I might be able to find a way down through one of these structures. Water's pouring out of the building. Is I better check it out. Someone's been through here. Camping gear. There's something behind that tarp. I was Adam. Oh, I was so close. Oh, to drowning, maybe. Not not to the embers. M Moreland, it's over. Well, not for me, it's not. Then you're going to die, alone, because we're not sticking around to fish out the corpse. We're through. And so the visionary's fate hung in the balance. Would he choose life or succumb to deadly delusion? <clears throat> Hello. So... There's an ancient city under the sand, but it's flooded. Suddenly, a Nora Spear Maiden appeared. Yeah, okay, um... Well, you're not typical Delvers. That's for sure. What's this? Uh, I... I call it a diving bubble. This is the Mark I. The Mark II was better, but uh, it got stuck halfway down. Air tube snagged. <laughs> you went down in that. Yeah, I hardly expect a layperson to understand. Because that's pretty smart. Uh, I'm sorry. May I remind you, you got stuck inside and nearly drowned. It'd have to be portable, though. Mm. Machine kneecap, maybe? Well, you'd need a filter. Synthetic membrane would do it. With a hose to a 
compressed, compressed air, air capsule. capsule, hammer and tongs. What is this? What is happening here? What? Get over here. She's a stranger. You got a name? Aloy. Moreland. Not a stranger anymore. You're a damn fool. Come on. I got the original schematics over here. Oh, um... Well, hold on. Just a couple of questions first. Fair enough. Partner? Partner? Don't mind him. What's so important down there that you'd risk your life? Uh, uh well... <clears throat> uh. Moreland, I'm not interested in salvage, okay? Whatever you find below is yours. Well, all right. Then what if I told you we were delving for the most spectacular treasures ever scribed by man or maid? I'd say get to the point. No nonsense. I like it. Behold, an ember. Looks like a piece of junk. Well, now, yes, but, but, but with a proper spark. These magnificent creations of the old ones paint mesmerizing pictures in the air, and the ruins below us are full of them. A feast for the eyes beyond description. This is my old Gramps promised me. So these embers project images? Paintings of light. It's amazing stuff. This one showed the most beautiful woman you've ever seen, beckoning all to a buffet of lobster and succulent beefs. <laughs> I must have watched it about a hundred times as a child in my old Gramps workshop. What happened to it? Over time, they die out. I cried the day that this one's light faltered. But there are many more below. As you'll see, if you get down there like I did and my old gramps before me. How did your grandfather discover these embers? He was here. 40 odd years ago. He, he was one of the first to lead a delving party into the West. He discovered the ancient city around us, plumbed the depths of this very structure. He found the hollow underneath and the glowing embers all about. Took as many as he could and brought them home. He always wanted to come back and get more, but well, he never scraped up the shards. What he really wanted to do was use the embers to put on a show one unlike the world has ever seen. Sounds like quite a guy. He was a true Delver, and a true showman, and I miss him. But I will do him proud. I will gather the embers and put on a spectacle that would have amazed even him. With your help, of course. So what exactly happened down there? It was a delve like no other. A chance to follow in my old Gramps' footsteps. Beneath this structure here is an enormous hollow, a dome protected from the sands. We built this elevator here to ensure easy egress and exit. It's quite a contraption, actually, and not so easy to- uh, Right, again. What happened? At the bottom. We beheld the treasure my Gramps first discovered. Painted images in the air of every description. Dancing women, and games and coins and promises of jackpots. I don't know what that is, but it's gotta be good. But then, something went wrong. The images turned nautical. Waves went through them, even fish. It's like a strange underwater dream. Poseidon's dream. Yes. Well, suddenly there was this terrible rushing sound and then an explosion of water erupted from the floor. 
So water just shot up from the floor and filled the place up? It was a raging flood unlike anything I've seen. We ran like forge fire and barely made it up the elevator as a wave just crashed beneath us. Shaken, but not stirred. I, I, I built the diving bubbles Mark I and Mark II. I tried the descent in each, but I nearly drowned both times. Abbott Dunn's beside himself. He thinks I'm insane. But I can't give up now. I, I, I just, I've come too far. And the embers are just barely within my reach. Well, maybe I can help. Yeah. Maybe you can. You guys don't seem like average Delvers. We're not really Delvers at all. We're, we're showmen. Like performers? You're Nora, and thus unfamiliar with the arts. We stage spectacles all around the claim. Stemmer tells stories, which I augment with all manner of sounds and fireworks, and Abaddund, he, well, Complains? He handles the money, which amounts to about the same thing. When we delve, it's to find gear for my theatrics. Which makes this delve the most important one of all. How deep is it? Can't I just swim down? Only if you have gills. You can stack 50 kegs in that shaft. Leave it to the Osserum to measure something in kegs. Talking liquid depths, I'd say it's apt. Apt or not, sounds too deep to hold my breath. Hence, our new invention. I'd better get after those parts. There's a fully intact compressed air capsule in the Mark II, but like I said, it's stuck in the shaft. If you made it back up alive, I should be able to swim down that far. All right. As for the other parts, Stemmer scouted a herd due south of here that should have what we need. I'm on it. Great. I'll come back when you get the gear. Good hunting. Probably get a, a guest list of 50. <laughs> so we need some, uh, at least three dozen kegs. <laughs> Brown ale, maybe. Uh, no, no. For him, scrapper's up. Are you planning a party? Budgeting for Moreland's funeral, thanks to you. I was this close. We were going to move on, leave all this nonsense behind, and you come along uh, and you spark your wet noodle idea. It's going to work. I've heard that before. So, uh, how does someone like you end up working for someone like Moreland? I work with Moreland. We got three equal claims in this venture. I saw one of his early shows. Back when it was... It was just him and his inventions. Works of flame, lights, and shadows, all kinds of gizmos. Never seen the like. But the man is all spectacle. No sense. Bleeds shards like, like, you get the idea. Without me to handle the finances, his dreams would be sunk. More sunk. Wish we were back in the claim. Plenty of normal shows to do without the, the salvage from this blasted place. And yet, you're here, in the middle of the desert, delving for his dream. It was a good one. But sometimes, a dream has to die. This dream of Moreland's... Is going to get him killed. Let's say it doesn't. What happens after he gets the salvage down there? Then we put on the greatest show the world's ever seen. We'll have, we'll have special seating, a premium ale, the works. Moreland will do his, his light spectacle 
thing at a stemmer. We'll get their eyes a sparkling with his tails, and I'll be selling tickets. <laughs> it's a nice thought, anyway. Morland mentioned you were showman. What? An ashram can't be anything other than a, a, a delver, tinker, or drunkard? <laughs> okay, sure, we are delvers too, but that is not our main source of income. Mostly, we go town to town, put them on shows. These shows, what are they? What happens at them? Tales and spectacle. Uh, uh, Morland's got the technical know-how, builds uh, all manner of inventions, whirly gigs of, of light and sound, cannons that, that, that shoot fire and showers of sparks and stemmer. Keeps them enthralled with tales of adventure in the smoothest baritone. Yeah, that. And you? Me? Who do you think handles the financials for the whole blasted thing? <laughs> those two, eh, those two might have the the sparks, but do you think they know their way around shards? <laughs> do you think? No, they don't. So Moreland was down in this ancient city, and... The three of us went down below. You? I can delve, too. Right. And uh, then what happened? What do you think? Water rushed in, we ran. And... Moreland built that blasted thing. Nearly got himself drowned. Twice. He... You want the finer details of his stupidity? You go ask him. I'm always willing to engage in some commerce. leave you alone. Do us a favor. Leave us all alone. The stout-hearted huntress approached. Her appearance is sudden as a spark of destiny. And the delve was at its direst. That's, uh, quite the introduction. Hmm. Maybe, uh, maybe a little internal rhyme instead. A maiden arose from the very sands that bore our woes. Nah, too trite. What is it with you and all the uh, words? That's what I do. The stalwart storyteller gazed upon the maiden with well-earned pride in his life's work. Stemmer Wordsmith, at your service. How did you end up following Moreland out here? Bright-eyed Moreland held his dreams aloft like a burning candle. And where that light went, the hearts of men were sure to follow. So you admire him? Admiration is but a gentle fire. It's the spark that delvers and tinkers and rogues alike are sure to warm to. Okay, guess that answers something. 
Your friend over there doesn't like me too much. The loud one. The old bee counter has the personality of a moss-eaten rock. <laughs> but oh, what a wicked mind for money. And a memory as long as life, or even the smallest debt. Uh, by that, he means he owes me shards. 147, to be exact. But as sharp as he was in things pecuniary, he had a dull forgetfulness for how many times a certain wordsmith saved his hoary hide. 147! 147. What exactly does a wordsmith do? Uh, like a tinker at the forge. A wordsmith hammers out words to entrance all who hear them. The young, the old, and frequently the inebriated. I didn't take the Osram for storytellers. Well, uh, they say the only thing makes a cold brew go down easier is a tale of times gone by. But it's always best to hit the road before the keg runs dry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why? Why is that? Oh, oh well, the Osram could get mighty agitated if they run out of drink, or if they don't like your story. So you're saying being a wordsmith can be dangerous? Oh, yeah. Story goes the wrong way, Osiram will throw stuff at you. What, like fruit? More like chairs or grenades. But the veteran wordsmith persevered through it all, hammer in hand, ready to give as good as he got. How do you think we got here all the way from the claim anyway, past those blasted machines? It wasn't by talking. Got to go see someone about an underwater city. And lo, the Huntress went forth. According to Moreland, the herd should be south of here. Hair is thick with this heat. over this area might have some useful data but how to get up there well this is where Moreland said that it would be they must have moved on I need to pick up their trail better look for tracks there tracks should lead me to the herd Sandstorm's blowing in. Just what I need. There's the herd. I should have the parts I need. Could use shock ammo against that machine. Oh, 
the storm's whipped up a sand spiral. Great. More machines? Better deal with them first. Okay, stop them all. Uh, where did the herd go?
spot it. Gotta move. Looks like the herd's caught between those sand spirals. Could use that to my village. Ready for anything now? It looks like the herd's caught between those sand spirals. I could use that to my advantage. something other than frost.
like the herd's caught between those sand spirals. It is like my village. I should check if one of these machines has an intact membrane. One synthetic membrane. Better check the other machines. One of them might have a kneecap I can use. The kneecap. Good. Okay, that takes care of the machine parts. Just gotta grab the compressed air capsule from Moreland's diving bubble. Turning a lot of dust. But it stings.
shock could do a lot of damage. Getting down now. Got the compressed air capsule. I should have all the parts to build this thing now. Before I get back to Moreland. What can I do for you, partner? I've got everything I need to build the... Uh, the incredible diving mask. I think diving mask is enough. I won't quibble. The workbench is all yours. a marvel if it works you'll let me try it i want to get down there and get those embers assuming i don't drown so what are you really looking for down there it's hard to explain something that caused a malfunction in the apparatus that controls the old city i think it started the flood well, I, I thought we started the flood like we sprung a trap i don't know how we were detected like I said, 
The dancing lights around us changed, turned to sea life. There was this flash of red and the roar of water surging in. Wait, a flash of red? A, a red light from a spot near the grate on the floor where the water burst through. It was like a beacon. <sighs> a warning. Thanks. That might help. I hope it does. And good luck down there. Okay, time to see if this thing works. So far, so good. I can actually breathe down here. The mask seems to be holding up. I've never been able to swim this deep before. Right here, more than 30 years ago, back when this casino was still called the Temple. One big bet turned my fate around, but now, fate's dealt as cruel as hand ever to everyone. I have to turn the lights out one final time, and the waters of my adopted home will at last run dry. Well, if a dream has to die, at least, I can say goodbye first. Stanley Chen. What did he do here? Nautical lights. I must be Poseidon's doing. like a way out.
It's down here, somewhere. Gotta find where it's hiding. Detected. Automatic drainage controls offline. To execute an emergency purge, manual reset of primary and secondary pump nodes is required. The purge can then be triggered at the pump maintenance station. If I do this purge and drain all the water, I can fight that big machine on dry ground. Looks like I have to reset a couple of pump nodes first. According to the map, there should be an access point for the first node south of here. More machines down here. I'll have to swim around them. Stick to cover. Fire could do a lot of damage. the access point. Should lead me to the pump node.
can't reach the ledge from here. Maybe there's something I can climb to get out. One node down. Better swim back up and find the access point for the second node. According to the map, the second node should be on the other side of the dome. Another access point. Should get me to the second node. Just shut down the secondary node. No more water for the fountains. No more shows. No one left to appreciate them anyway. I'll never forget the city's grand reopening. 
The fountains have been bone dry for years. No one believed they'd ever return. So, as the first bloom arced up in the dome, the music swelling, my heart soared right along with it. The city gave me a second chance once. Now it had one, too. The domes, the water. He was responsible for all of it. Taking care of both nodes. Now I just need to activate the emergency purge at the maintenance station. According to the map, the maintenance stations should be at the south end of the dome. Okay, more will do much.
There's red light in that tower. Just like at the console I found earlier. That might be the maintenance station. But how to get in? Looks like part of this building collapsed. There might be a way in. Okay, let's see where this leads. now. I just gotta find a console to activate the emergency purge. Should be a console in here. System shutdown is almost done. Only thing left is to power everything down at the control center. So, I guess this is it. One final walk down the strip, and then it slides out forever. At least I won't be around to see it destroyed. The Odyssey will be well on its way to Sirius by the time the swarm gets here. Still, my last memory of this place will be empty. A city that's already dead. Time to draw this place out.
That did it. <laughs> okay. Now I can deal with that machine guarding the door on the other end of the dome. And once I get past it, I can get to what's waiting on the other side of the door. Poseidon. and get rid of all of the water. left these machines behind. I could sneak by them, deal with a big one first.
Poseidon is through there. But where did that machine go? Aloy! It's a miracle! Is this you? Did you lower the waters? Yeah, but there's a new problem. That thing's in our way. Okay then. Stay up here and start firing when I engage.
You guys all right? More than all right. This... You... We... Embers we could ever want, and it's all thanks to you. Very, uh, heartwarming. But maybe we can just, you know, grab what we came here for and get out before any more of those things decide to show up. Now, now, shard counter. Nothing wrong with a little revelin'. Though we should probably let our flame-haired friend get going. I believe she has business down here, does she not? Right. Of course. You need any help? I can handle it from here. Very well. well. We'll start taking some of the embers upstairs. Holler if you need us. Thanks. this away for later. Sudden should be somewhere beyond the store. Time to bring it home. Poseidon should be hiding in some kind of processor. I need to find a console to gain access to it. I can't do it. I can't give up on this place. I'm leaving everything on standby. The system's equipped for runs for decades, if not hundreds of years. It's a long shot. But maybe someday... There. Against we all odds, someone will find this place again. Marvel at its lights and wonders. Discover a fortune and boundless opportunity. Make it their own dream. After all, if the city can give me a second chance, if water can flow in the wasteland, anything's possible. He was right.
I'm here to bring you home, Poseidon. To Gaia. Yes. Mother. All waters lead back to her. Elizabeth Sobek. Alpha Prime. Master Override activated. Restoring Poseidon's subordinate function to original code. Okay. Gotta bring this back to Gaia. Initiated. Looks like taking Poseidon triggered a restart of the city's power system. World and crew must have headed back up top. With all the embers they could carry, but... An elevator. Moron must have built this before the place flooded. Nice to work. Be nice not to have to climb back up. she did it must have powered up the whole city How much did all... What's going on out there? <laughs> oh. Oh, the show my old Gramps always wanted. There's another.
His dream realized. His old Gramps legacy ensured. Our hero beheld the sea of desert lights and wept at his good fortune. When I saw the Embers as a child, I never dreamed they could be like this. Thank you, Aloy. Well, did you find what you were looking for? I did. And now I have to move on. Oh. Oh. Come back when you can. I got big plans for this place. I thought you wanted to put on shows with the Embers back in the claim. Oh, <laughs> no. This is the show. Imagine folks from all over the land coming to take it all in. Plus, some food and a nice place to stay. Not to mention a variety of entertainment venues. Uh, don't forget, games of chance. Plenty of shards to be had there for certain. <laughs> a new dream, huh? I, um, I hope you make it happen. Goodbye, gentlemen. This delve was a story for the ages, all thanks to you. If Moreland and crew is gonna stay, maybe I should come back and check on them later. For now, I need to get Poseidon back to Gaia. But with all the ruins here, I wanna look around before I head back. And with my new diving mask, I should be able to swim as deep as I want to, once I find a place with more water. Welcome back, Aloy. I see you have recovered Poseidon. Aloy, can you come downstairs? Beta has something you need to hear. Okay. I'll be right down. Aloy, I have managed to unlock additional rooms within the facility. Got it. Hi, Gaia. Hello, Aloy. So there's a few people here now, and they're... learning. All about you, the ancient world. Almost like what was supposed to happen. 
before Apollo was purged. Yes. While the loss of the Apollo database was catastrophic, there is still much that can be gleaned from the data you have uncovered. For instance, Varl has been reviewing the last recorded entries from those who perished during the Pharaoh Plague. Hearing their hopes and fears made him quite somber. Anything I should be worried about? I do not believe so. I have elected not to intervene, to allow him to process this on his own terms. When I dove down into Vegas, I found data about the man who built the dome over the city, Stanley Chen. It turns out he was a member of Far Zenith. But if he loved Vegas so much, why did he abandon it? Why not try to save it? The Zeniths at their core have proven to be exceptional survivalists. Faced with overwhelming odds of extinction, they chose to flee. Even still, what he achieved... Water to the wasteland, an entire city brought back to life. A thousand years later, the whole place was still on standby, just waiting for someone to come along and wake it up. So the Zeniths are the same people who left Earth. Physically immortal. How'd they figure it out? From what we know of Far Zenith, it is plausible that prominent geneticists and engineers were offered a place aboard the Odyssey in exchange for their expertise. Given enough time, technology, and resources, any challenge can be overcome. Like how Minerva eventually generated the deactivation codes for the Pharaoh Plague. Exactly. The extinction signal didn't just wake Hades. It made every subordinate function self-aware. Why? I have wondered this myself. So far as I can tell, Hades was the sole target, and the partial sentience imparted to other subordinate functions was incidental. A signal that precise would require thorough knowledge of the system. How could the Zeniths know that? From the records on your focus, it appears Far Zenith had an informant during the development of Zero Dawn. Hank Shaw. He was supposed to steal a copy of the system for Far Zenith, but Elizabeth and Travis Tate caught him first. Yes. It is likely Far Zenith acquired knowledge on the system's design through him, despite his failure. So, from what Beta told me, I guess we can assume the Zenith's technology is powerful in all sorts of ways, right? Yes. As your encounters with them amply demonstrate, they appear to make extensive use of robotic servitors. Further, they seem to be equipped with some kind of protective energy field that shields them from harm. They seemed indestructible, but that weapon the Rebels used stripped their shield somehow. Throughout history, Every defensive technology has eventually been defeated by an offensive counterpart. While we lack the anti-shielding weapon, were I to absorb Hephaestus and utilize it to create a large force of combat machines, no shielding could withstand such an assault indefinitely. So there's hope. Always. Beta believes the Zeniths want to use the terraforming system to wipe out life on Earth. Start over. So they can build it how they want. Further supporting our hypothesis. But why? Given their technology, they could wipe out the tribes of the world by easier means. And if they're the same people who left Earth a thousand years ago, wouldn't they want the biosphere to be as it was? It is likely they adjusted to different planetary conditions in their colony on Sirius. They may be trying to recreate that environment here. Turning Earth into a new Sirius. Their own personal playground. I guess I should get going. 
as you say. Be well, Aloy. Looks like I can open that door now. There's a lot of equipment in here. Gaia, what was all this for? This room was designed for management of the facility's vast seed banks. From here, control center operatives would have monitored new crop rotations into the automated farmlands, now known as Plainsong. I see. This console. There are still thousands of plant samples stored deep below the facility. I could ask Gaia about them the next time I talk to her. I've been tackling the design of the Ag Lab. Place is gonna have a lot of seed stock to work with. My favorite? Sample 626. Calotropis gigantea. The crown flower. We used to have one in our backyard. Butterflies always fluttering around. Every morning, uh -huh. August would run out there to check under the leaves. See if any caterpillars turned into chrysalises. Now, I'd like to imagine that the future will be filled with them. Looks like someone's made this space their own. I see you found Varl and Zoe's room, Aloy. I believe they wanted private accommodations. I see. I don't think that door had power before, but looks like it's malfunctioning. Looks like some kind of maintenance space. Uh, Aloy? A bunch of lights just turned on up here? Was that you? Oh. Huh. Yeah, I guess it was. Hi! <laughs> Happy birthday, Isaac! Daddy sure does love his little big man. She found that recording from the data on your focus. She's been watching it a lot. I think it helps calm her. You know, I used to watch this a lot too. Whenever I wanted to take my mind off things. Daddy sure does love his little bit. But there's something you need to tell me? While you were gone, I came down here to check on her. Then we started talking. Right, Beta? She's been thinking about how to capture Hephaestus, studying the data Gaia gave her. 
but we started talking about some other stuff. You know, just getting to know each other, right? And then she told me that one of the Zeniths might be different from the others. Tilda, you saw her at the Hades Proving Lab. Go on. On the way to Earth, the Zeniths never showed their faces. My servitor caretaker referred to them as my benefactors and promised I'd meet them someday when I had learned enough. And then, one day, a data channel opened in my training interface. In it, Tilda was waiting for me in a virtual replica of a house on a cliff overlooking the ocean. It was beautiful. She showed me paintings, books, media files. We met there in secret many times. But a few months later, it stopped. Can you tell us why, Beta? I found some data about Tilda at the Hades Proving Lab. I think she was a liaison between Far Zenith and Zero Dawn. She knew Elizabeth Sobek, that's for sure. Maybe that's why she reached out to you? So Tilda set up a secret virtual space where she could talk to you, a house on a cliff. Then later, she cut you off. But other than the fact that Tilda knew Elizabeth, you don't know why she did those things? I don't, okay? I thought of every possible reason that would make her leave, but whatever I did wrong, I don't know what it is. When I finally met the others, she ignored me. I acted like the data channel never existed. None of this even matters. Tilda's the same as the others. It won't help us defeat them. Okay. Let's leave it at that, then. What's wrong? I'm trying, Varl. But she is tough to take. I'm out there in the wilds, risking my life every day, and all she can do is hide in there and tell us how hopeless it all is. I'm sorry, she's had a rough time, but she is really not helping right now. Hmm. You always seem to be on top of everything, so I sometimes forget about what you've been through. I mean, it wasn't that long ago you were so banged up you couldn't even walk. About that. When I pulled you out of the water back near the Proving Lab, you were muttering Rost's name. You never talk about him, but he raised you trained you. You must miss him a lot. Of course I do. But I don't have time to think about that now. I need to get back out there. Okay. I'll keep working with Beta. Gaia says she knows a lot about Zero Dawn. And maybe she just needs some time to adjust and then she can help us with Hephaestus. Sure. But I won't hold my breath. Was this door always locked? Beta requested the use of that room as her personal space. I have locked it at her request. Okay. Door's locked. Maybe Gaia will be able to get it open later. Lost. 
Mind if we have a word? Of course not. Does it still hurt? It comes and goes. I try not to think about it, but its absence is always present for me. It's difficult to explain. I can't claim to understand. Only empathize. Then you have my thanks. Have you spoken with Erend at all? I've had little chance to. I did see him bring some ale from out east. That stuff's as bitter as selfbrush. You get used to it, eventually. In fact, I wouldn't mind a drink myself. I'm sure Erend wouldn't mind sharing. Must be strange, seeing everything through a focus now. I can see machines like never before. Their strengths and weaknesses simply reveal themselves to me. To think that such a tiny object might be the most powerful weapon I've ever possessed. What do you think of this place? It must take some getting used to. It's an efficient center of operations, and an acceptable training facility. Though it could use some more... color. Duly noted. I should get going. If I can help in some way, say the word. I will. Thank you. Aloy. Uh, it's everything all right? It, it seemed like you and Varl were down at that basement for a while. Yeah, everything's fine, I guess. Well, okay. Uh, what, what can I do for you? How are things going around here? Hey, you tell me. Varl's new girlfriend tried to kill me earlier. What did you do? I made one joke about how they, you know, eat grass a lot. How does anyone fight with nothing but tree leaves in their stomach, anyway? From the looks of it, the Utaru. Yeah, well... I wasn't expecting it to be that fast. Just... try not to get hurt. Are you playing that board game I keep seeing everywhere? Oh, you mean Strike? Yeah, I'm just trying to you know, get some practice in. Helps take my mind off things. Yeah, it's a Tanakh game. I thought about playing Catalo, but... What if he tries to kill me if I win? I think you're safe. Yeah, I don't know. Heard a lot of things about that tribe. Do I smell... ale? I brought some over from Chain Scrape. And with everything that's been going on, I thought we could all use a drink. Besides, there is nothing that brings people together like a good brew. That's what my sister always said, anyways. You're more than welcome to have some. Maybe another time. You still sifting through loads of data? Yeah, it's interesting. There's lots of... words. I, I thought maybe I could try finding things with more, you know, pictures in it. Not much luck there, but I... I did find out about these, uh, holofilms. Like, images put together to tell a story. Uh, they were made to look like they were the real thing. Uh, the Osaram like shows. I bet they pay a lot of shards for those hollows. It seems like you're getting a hang of this data thing. Yeah, it's been helpful. When I can make sense of anything. I did find the old ones enjoyed a good brew like the rest of us. Only they let machines serve the stuff in bars. They even let the damn things cut you off before you saw the underside of a table. Uh, and that's half the fun. Now, you won't see me letting a robot serve me a pitcher anytime soon. I should get going. Back to reading, I guess. Do be careful out there. Hey, got a sec? Of course. You brought up Rost, before. I do think about him. You know, he was all I had. And he brought me up the best he could. 
Not only that, when Hades discovered who I was and sent the Eclipse after me, he sacrificed himself so I could survive. But that seems like ages ago. So much has happened since. What I'm doing now, I don't think he could even begin to understand it. The Sacred Lands were all he really knew. So I can't let myself dwell on him. Not with everything I have to do. I understand. Sometimes, when I think about my sister, about what she would have become if she had survived the proving, it hurts. And I just need to bury it for a while. But only for a while, Aloy. You can't ignore it forever. Memories always come back. The ones that matter, anyway. I know. But for now, the mission has to come first. Fair enough. You feeling okay? I was just thinking about Beta and all that time spent with the Zeniths. To think someone would make a person just to lock them in a room to use when needed, like some sort of tool. Elizabeth Sobek sacrificed herself for the world, and yet they have no trouble treating Beta like a slave. Another reason we have to stop them. How's training? Discovering something new about our past every day. When we first met, you asked me if I ever wondered what this world looked like when the old ones lived here. I thought it was strange at the time, but a lot has changed since I left the embrace. Now I'm just trying to make sense of everything I thought I knew and versus everything I know now. The change is hard, but it gets easier over time. It's hard to believe we're dealing with the original Zeniths. The same ones that left for Sirius a thousand years ago. To live on for so long, it doesn't seem natural. Because it's not. That weapon we found where Beta was hiding, any chance we can use that against them? Silence made sure that wasn't an option. Why would he build something to hurt Far Zenith, yet allow them to capture you? With Silence, there's always an angle. We just don't know what it is yet. What do you make of this Tilda that Beta was talking about? Well, the way she described it, I can't shake off the feeling that Tilda wanted something from Beta. Maybe because she's Elizabeth Sobek's clone? But whatever she wanted, I don't think she got it. If we knew what it was, maybe we could use it to our advantage somehow. Uh, I don't know. I don't think Tilda and Elizabeth were on the best of terms. Oh well. At least we can take some comfort in knowing the Zeniths don't trust each other. Maybe. I should get back out there. We'll be here if you need us. Aloy. Hey, how's everything going? I am well, but Varl told me Beta's having a hard time adjusting to life here with us. I wish there was something I could do to help. I'm not sure any of us can. A tree won't bear fruit in a day. We'll do our best to make her feel welcome. Are you guys training with Erend as well? If you count trying to stick a spear in his gut as training, then yes. I've been told. Please tell me you weren't being serious, though. Of course not. Good. I was going for a couple of broken bones. He called the Utaru Leaf Grazers laughed at the idea of us simple farmers being formidable fighters. Before I knew it, he and I were battling it out in the common room. The man is slow, but he can throw a hammer around. Don't look so worried. We're evenly matched. For now. Next time he's going down like a load of boar dump. Just try not to kill each other. Injuring his pride should be good enough. Is there anything I can help with around here? Hmm? Oh, no. We're doing fine. Are you okay? You and Varl have been friends for a while. I like to think so. I was wondering... What do you know about his mother? Oh. That bad, huh? Why do you want to know? He's spoken of his sister, Vala, but... I noticed he avoids talking about his mother. She's the war chief of the Nora. Best warrior the tribe's ever known. 
Tougher than a Thunderjaw, but she could be pretty harsh at times. I see. That must have been hard on him. Thank you for telling me. I feel silly not being able to ask Varl directly. I wouldn't worry about it. He's probably afraid Sona will scare you off someday. I'd like to see her try. Found anything else combing through that data? Varl and I have been looking into the animals of the old world. Apparently there used to be thousands more species roaming around than there are today. Can you imagine that? I'd give anything to see them. Even as holograms. Though I know that without Artemis or Apollo that may prove difficult. At least I can find comfort in knowing Gaia used many of them as inspiration for her machines. Her memory honors them. What are you going to learn next? I'm not sure. I asked Gaia for suggestions, and she brought up data you found on something called a... Museum? From what I gather, the old ones would store knowledge in them for all to see and learn from. Like you've done here, for us. Maybe one day, more people will be able to use this place to learn the way we have. That sounds... crowded, but nice. The Zeus did a number on Beta. But she seems to trust Varl. I still can't believe she told him the Zeniths are immortals. Old ones who cut themselves off from the cycle of life and decay. I've never heard of anything so selfish. To deny our dying bodies to the Earth. To doom the life that would bloom in their place. It's despicable. I should get going. Good luck on your search. Thank you. 